dump in a crap load of some Cabernet. I'll do the top for you. The keyhole fire finished. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's time to have some cocktails, have a nice fire, cook some good food, and uh, sleep comfy. There we go. Look at that. Huh? Huh? Mm. Damn. All right, here we are. All right. All right, so here I am at the camp, Memorial Day weekend. Not doing a, uh, we're doing a regular camp out here. We have a cooler, brought the wagon, not stuffing everything into a backpack today, but, uh, Gonna have a nice camp out with the lady. She's over over this way, setting up the tent. Doing a tent, no tarp. Old fashioned camping, but still in a beautiful spot. We'll take a little walk around in a little bit, but first thing I'm gonna uh, redo this fire pit behind me. <clears throat> Time to get rid of the fire reflector. It's uh, been charred up pretty good over the winter, so, um, and I don't really feel like cutting a bunch of firewood, so that's getting burned tonight. And, uh, yeah, so I'll catch up with you later. Oh, yeah. It's from the uh, last uh, time I had a camp out here. Fire reflector caught on fire pretty, uh, pretty good. And another one. So here I got the, I'll do the top view, the keyhole fire finished. I had these nice flat rocks that I had used previously as part of the reflector and other things. But uh, as you can see, lined it with some smaller rocks, help keep the warmth there as the coals are burning. These here to hold my grill grate. And then I made a little couple tables on either side. So it's nice to set things. Yeah, there it is. Boom. All right, so I thought of a new use for a folding shovel. I'm gonna make a nice little table out of this thing. I can get it. There we go. Look at that. Huh? Huh? Some here, there. Nice little outdoor kitchen going on here. Could you calm down, sir? He's still wild up about the lawnmower. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah, the birds wound wild up. Life so, anyway, yeah. Um, so, here we go. Anyway, we got about a late start today. Uh, it's almost 6 o'clock. Um, there was the neighbor mowing his lawn for two and a half hours straight, mowing down a beautiful meadow. He pissed his bird off too, because this thing is like freaking still. Our ears are ringing from this mower. It was just a riding mower, but uh, two and a half hours mowing down a beautiful field. 
beautiful meadow, all kinds of wildflowers, tall grasses, lots of dandelions. It's beautiful. Just mowed it down. Not to mention I couldn't film because it was just overwhelmingly loud. So anyway, here we are. I wanted to show you this new little thing because like I said, we're doing a, just a camping trip. We're not, not pretending to bushcraft. It's Memorial Day weekend. It's time to have some cocktails, have a nice fire, cook some good food, and uh, sleep comfy. It's going to be like, what, 54 tonight? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Just the blanket. Just the wool blanket if we need it. Anyway, so I, I found this old uh, travel bar in my basement. I've known, I know I've had, I, I've been aware that I have it for years. I mean, it's moved from house to house to house. I don't know when I got it, probably early 20s. But uh, I believe it was my grandfather's that he took to like Packer games and Brewer games for tailgating. And it's great. It's got uh, little shot glasses. They look like, uh, these look like ounce and a half to two ounce shot glasses. They look a little bigger than, whoop, do. <laughs> oops, than your average shot glass. But anyway, you can measure. <laughs> little ice scooper. This sexy little stirring stick. Look at that. And... Four cups, so you can share with your friends, three of your closest friends, or just see if you want anybody to drink with and you don't have any friends. And it holds three uh, up to liter bottles at a time. So we have some red wine, which we're going to use for, for dinner, Tito's, handmade vodka, and some, uh, well, this says J. Bavay, but it's actually Corbell. I had to pour it into... Was it Corbett? No, it was E and J. E and J brandy. But it was a weird shaped bottle, so I had to pour it into an old bottle. Um, anyway, just wanted to share that with you. I, I, hopefully my face wasn't cut off the whole time because I'm sitting forward. But anyway, this is a great little thing. Here, you want to hold that for a sec, honey? And the best part is... You can off to work. <laughs> a couple little pieces of fat wood in here. Just in case. We have had a lot of rain lately, so I just want to make sure I have some fuel. No, me, no need to mess around with that ferro rod. Trying to make sparks and stuff. They like said, two and a half hours gone from a lawnmower. I got, I, that's the last I'll bring it up. Bam. I think we're good now. So it's going to take some keeping an eye on. All right, get things rolling here. I'm going to make some delicious beef short ribs over the fire. So just cut these up so they have a size where they're going to. Whoop, that's not good. All right, I'm losing carrots on the ground here. Just a rough chop here. Put those in. Celery, leaves and all. Garlic once again. That's so the flavor comes out. Just a little bit. Next, we'll get the beef ready. So there's our veggies. Basically a mirepoix is what you would call it in French cooking terms. Uh, celery, onion, carrot. And I added garlic because we there's never anything wrong with garlic. Alright. Next the beef. 
so I don't make a big gigantic mess everywhere and dirty up my cutting board unnecessarily. I'm gonna do this. Simple as can be. Salt and pepper. They're gonna get a nice a nice sear on the uh, the grill grate over the fire before we do anything with them. And then uh, they're gonna do a slow braise, like I said in red wine, in that pot sealed up for probably quite some time. I'm, it may be dark by the time we uh, get these things out. So I'm going to continue seasoning this. I'll see you over by the grill. All right, got to start getting this fire going here for the short ribs. Start browning those up. Some coals. Heat the grate up while it's going. Get a nice sear on those short ribs. Keep adding small things to just get a nice bed of coals. Grab what I need from here. Just kind of back and forth until you think it's about right. Time for the for the beef. Nice and brown, caramelized on the outside. And that's what we want. Put that in the pot. This one's looking mighty fine. Alright, these are going in the pot. Dump in a crap load of some Cabernet. My personal favorite for cooking. I'm gonna do a good amount. Eh, a little bit more. The rest we can uh, polish off later. Cover this with foil. I wanna try and keep as much of that heat in there and steam called braising. Not roasting, not frying, not baking, braising. So that just sits here. Let her slow cook. We'll be eating when it's dark. Gotta keep this, uh, keep this cooking. I lined the bottom with some small rocks, so hopefully over this period of time of just feeding this with hot coals and burning sticks, those uh, rocks should be holding some residual, some residual heat, giving giving uh, our braise the heat it needs. But I I don't want to open this for at least another hour. It's been on here about an hour. I don't even want to think about checking it because this needs to break down all the connective tissues and the cartilage and fats and anything kind of like when you're you're uh, roasting or smoking a pork shoulder for pulled pork you got to just be patient low and slow and uh, it's gonna be worth it though right honey Absolutely. just leaves time 
Time for more La Memorial Day, almost a Labor Day. Who doesn't do that though? Leaves more time for Memorial Day cocktails. So, I'll check in with you in a little while. So here we are, waiting, waiting for the ribs, waiting for the short ribs to get done, braising in that lovely Cabernet Sauvignon, garlic, onion, celery, carrot, salt, pepper, real simple. Gonna make a nice uh, sticky rice with some scallions mixed in. Pour the sauce over the top of that. That sounds amazing. Mm -hmm. And I'm gonna make a little uh, little bourmanier. I love French. <laughs> it's such a cool language. When when somebody can speak it fluently, it's just to it's me beautiful. it's mesmerizing. I do also enjoy um, the Slavic languages. Listening to those, Russian, Polish. I mean, I'm. I'm half Polish, so, but I, I enjoy the sound of the words, the way that it, when it's spoken fluently, and it's mesmerizing to me. Yeah. Obviously, uh, the New Zealand accent and Australian oh, accent, yeah. I mean, there are differences, I do know that. Um, yeah. Linguistics is great. That's, that's another thing that amazed me. One of the things about uh, J.R.R. Tolkien, the Lord of the Rings author, he created languages, not one language, not two languages, not three, multiple languages for those those stories. Like, he had them mapped out. Like, I mean, there were real words and real alphabets and real, like, it, it does. There was no internet back then. <laughs> I mean, The Hobbit came out in the 30s sometime. That book was published in the, I want to say... 36 or 39 rings a bell. So he was he was a professor at Oxford for years before that. Um, there's a there's a whole big history. I'm sure all the all the Lord of the Rings nerds know every exactly what I'm talking about. And I'm a Lord of the Rings nerd. <laughs> yes, you are. I am totally a nerd. <laughs> hey, uh, remember when we went on that hike in, in yes. uh, the Emma Carlin yes. trail? We at that point where it yes. looked like the forest at the end of the fellowship when yep. Boromir got shot by the by the orc guy. Mm -hmm. It was like spitting image. I mean, I like had to pause and look around like <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that was awesome. That was a beautiful forest. And it had so many like changes. Mm -hmm. Like we'd walk for a half hour. We're walking through the and chapters. all of a sudden it would be like feel like we're in a totally different forest. We're walking through walking through the chapters or the yeah. The different scenes, yeah, for sure. And it's not like the, the types of trees were really changing. I mean, it's a standard, you know, set of trees. I don't know. The, the sun, it's not like the sun was coming out and going behind a cloud. Just, there was like a different vibe. Mm -hmm. It was weird. Wow, there's some stars. It's clear. It was supposed to be cloudy. Oh the stars. What? Oh, man. It was... Look at them. It was supposed to be cloudy. All right. Time to uh, take a peek at this. Oh man, I, that smells amazing. Wow. Ooh. They are a lot closer than I thought they would be. Oh yeah. That bone poking out, that means, oh, they're doing their thing. They are doing their thing. All right. I think uh, at this point, we kind of want some re some reduction on that red wine. We can take that foil off. That can go bye-bye. Yeah. We're getting there. Mm. I'm so hungry. Trying to get some rice going. Reach into my goodie bag here. A 
think we'll just do this whole amount. Butter out, get some bread out too. Okay, so all a Burr Manier is, like I said, is melted butter. Got some nice local butter made here. And we're going to do, that's probably about two tablespoons. So here we got our butter we're going to melt for our Burr Manier. Just got to get it set over here on the fire. Mix our flour in. take much don't want to burn it there we go all right well it's fully melted so you can see I'm gonna just kind of dump a little flour in here see how that works out too much flour in there. But it'll work. See, like it's like a roux, but you don't cook it anymore. It cooks the rest of the way in the sauce. We'll put that into the red wine. It'll thicken it up into a nice little gravy. Good to go. Look at those things. Pretty purple, whites. I believe this is garlic mustard. I'm not sure what each of these are. These might be wild violets. Kind of wilting a little bit, but still pretty. Unfortunately, it's Minnesota Vikings colors, but. Um. Alright, so I think this rice is all done. Nice and sticky. Good taste. Mm. We will set the outside. Um, I can't figure out where to put anything. So we're going to take the pork out. Pork. The beef. Let it rest a little bit. Wow, this stuff is just falling apart. Look at that. That fell right off the bone. Look at how much they shrunk when they first went in there. We need to strain the sauce. Got some cheesecloth here. Keep all those bits out that we don't want. Look 
Look at that. Nothing but nothing but red wine and beef juice. Put that in there. Okay. Now we can let this reduce down a little bit. So we're just going to add some of this. Watch it thicken. Turn kind of into a gravy. Oh yeah, now it's getting a nice, nice saucy consistency. I'll let that sit for a little bit. I'm gonna cut up a little bread, grill a little bread to sap up all the goodness. Now you got a piece cut. Check that out. Okay. Yum yum. Yum yum. Drop the uh, meat right back into the sauce. Get rid of, look at those bones. Mm. Clean off the bone. Look at that. Nice and coated. That wonderful sauce. And the bread's warm. Okay. Add just a little bit. A little bit of water. A little, little bit of water to this rice. Thin it out just a touch. Get our scallions. Dump those in. Mix that all together. A lot of rice. Okay, well it's serving up time. A couple pieces of crusty bread. I'm gonna have a nice helping of rice because I'm starving. Honey? Yes. Okay. Tell me when. Mm, I'll tell you a bit more. Oh, okay. All right. <laughs> Whatever I don't eat, I can throw out. Now, the guest of honor. Damn. That looks really good. 
So there we have it. Beef short ribs. Creamy rice with scallions. Red wine reduction, sort of. Thickened with a... What did I call it? Bermagnier. <laughs> <laughs> and some crusty bread and some beautiful flowers for our Memorial Day dinner. This looks heavenly. It does. Yes, it does. Okay. So, I only have one fork, so I'm going to... Uh, <laughs> Don't even really need the knife. I'm gonna just use it to help separate. Oh, little rice in there. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Mm. Oh my god, that's so good. Okay. Whoa. Here we go, honey. Happy Memorial, Happy Memorial Day. Happy Memorial Day. Happy all the other tomorrows. Everybody. Our pretty flowers. Take that out. You know, should we have a little wine? A little glass of wine with dinner? Sure. Might as well. Some yellow towel. <laughs> a little. dribbled all over your finger. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers, honey. Alright, here we go. Mm. Oh, they're so good. It's literally just shredding apart. Mm -hmm. It's really good. Gotta have a big bite of the rice with the meat. Mm. Like I said, normally I've had this. I've had this served with risotto in an Italian restaurant. Mm -hmm. Red wine reduction. Oh, so good. It's really not that hard to do over a campfire, though. Cheers, honey. Cheers. Happy Memorial Day weekend. I wonder how many people really remember what Memorial Day really is. All things considered right now, whatever side of the fence you're on, as far as freedoms and liberties, this is not. Okay, you just squinted like my headlamp was on. I'm like, oh my God, I swear I turned it <laughs> <This> off. <is laughs> oh, that's funny. <laughs> no, but, you know, it's to honor the fallen, you know, for all the wars and battles, fat, you know, fought over the years. Mm -hmm. and a lot of those battles and a lot of those wars were fought to either secure freedom or to continue freedom. Yeah. I wonder how many people stop and think about that or if it's just a three-day weekend, you know. Anyway, sorry to get so deep. <laughs> it's a nice fire. Just burning slow, slow and hot. Lots of smoke, though, but thankfully it's going that way for once. Not my face. I cannot believe the amount of stars out tonight. It's so beautiful. They're not as bright as I would like, but I'll take it. Okay. Obviously, there's the Big Dipper right there. That was the easiest one to find. I'm not much of a astrologist or astronomer or but whatever the word is. Anyone can find the Big Dipper, though. That's right. I remember, oh, I think every one of my kids when they were three found the Big Dipper <laughs> <laughs> right around there. You about ready to head to bed? I'm tired. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah, I guess uh, this is about it for us here. 
sit and let the fire die down, smolder. Hopefully you enjoyed the uh, the video of the 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 beef short ribs. I'm not gonna mess it up. I called it pork at one point when I was cooking them, didn't I? <laughs> that was last night. Then I was like beef. Uh... <laughs> but yeah, real easy. Just uh, you know, if you know how to grill meat, grill a steak or whatever. That's all you gotta do with the meat first, and then you throw it in. Basically, make a stew, like a beef stew, kind of. You know, you could have thrown potatoes in there and it probably wouldn't have, mm. you know, maybe that's the, what I should have done. It would have Yum, kind of so self-thickened that sauce a little bit, the starch from the potatoes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm just babbling now. Anyway, yeah, but it was real easy, you know. And it's it's kind of a sit and wait for it dinner so you can sit around and relax and enjoy. It's not like a hands-on, constantly doing stuff. But uh, anyway, happy Memorial Day. We might say good night. Before we lay down, a little good night, a little good night wish, a little good night kiss, right? So, uh, thanks for watching Butch Food Network. Sayonara. <laughs>